Hello, this is Tuffman Trifold Production with another Blender Quick Tip. I uh, apologize if my voice sounds kind of low. I didn't bring my microphone with me, so I'm using the microphone that comes with the laptop. And I'll try to bump the sound up as high as I can so that you guys can actually hear what I'm saying. Hopefully you can still hear me. Uh, but in this tutorial, I'll just introduce everyone to an add-on called the Shockwave add-on. And uh, it's pretty pretty interesting, not that run that many parameters uh, for it. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. And it's not a free add-on. Uh, I'm using it for Blender 2.92. I think there are newer versions of it, uh, but I'll leave a link of it uh, below this video so you can download yourselves and check it out. And the process for installing it is still the same process. Just go to Edit, Preferences, Install, navigate to where you've downloaded it onto your system. Once you've found it, click on it. Click on Install Add-on. I've already done that myself. Let me type in Shockwave, and there it is. Put a check in the box, and it's activated. And it's on the uh, right-hand side of your, your user interface in Blender, and here it is. And it works in Blenders, Eevee, and Cycles. But obviously, Cycles is, is much better. Uh, but they're both relatively fast. Uh, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to use the EV uh, rendering settings. And let's get rid of this cube by pressing delete on our keyboard, have that cube selected and delete it. And then we're going to click on generate, and it gives us this little uh, setup here with the empties. And this little ring on the inside is the actual emitter for the shock waves. Let's change our uh, viewport here by clicking on that icon to go into EV. And let's make this darker so you can actually see the shockwave better. And once you press play, there you go. It's pretty. It's, it's a pretty nice add-on. Now let's leave it at that. And, and you can see that it's got a lot of particles coming from that emitter. And uh, you can change the color of the shockwave to any color you want in the color wheel. Green, blue, purple, yellow. Uh, you can clear the shockwave by pressing that button that we want, we want to just keep it as it is. You can increase the glow by increasing that parameter there, make it a little bit brighter. Increase the count of the particles here. And you can also just, whenever you do any, any, any kind of changes to any of the parameters, you can just like rewind the play button here by clicking on that uh, icon there and it'll just take it back to the beginning. You can set the start when you want the particles to start to emit from the emitter when they end. Change the lifetime, the velocity, particle size. Uh, you can affect the force of it, the strength, size, and the flow of it. And let's kind of test some of these parameters. So let's press play and see where we are. That's where we are not right now. Let's increase the force to like 100. Enter. Let's go back and see what that does. Okay, this it really scatters them a lot more. It's like fireflies in the night skies. It's pretty cool. That's not bad. Uh, let's reduce that back to, or return that back to where it was by pressing Control Z. Uh, the size of the force. Let's turn that up to, right now it's 1.77. Let's make that 20. Let's see what that does. Press play. Again, it, it kind of keeps the uh, particles in a circular, you know, uh, form until the very end. Which isn't that bad, that's pretty nice. Let's press Control Z again, take that back to 1.77. See what the flow does, bump it up to 10, press play. And it keeps it a little bit closer to the source of the emission, which is that ring there. So that's not bad either. Control Z, 2.1. Now, you can also do an animation with this where you can have the pulse arrays kind of staggered, so to speak. Um, let's say you want to make like a cannon or a gun using this uh, shockwave uh, as opposed to trying to use it for the typical use of the shockwave. This is how you can do that. I'm, I've been playing around with it quite a bit. Let's go into one, get, get our side view. This is from the front. Let's go into three, go into the, the right. Okay. And with this, all the selected, all the emitters and empty selected, uh, press R, X90 on our keyboard. We want the shock waves to go from right to left. Okay. 
Now we're going to press Shift D and click on our Move Gizmo and pull it on the Y axis straight ahead. And Shift D <clears throat> one more time, pull it straight ahead again. And now we have all of our emitters here. And they're going to be going from right to left. If we press play, they all go at the same time, but we want it to stagger. In order, in other words, we want this to go off first, second, and third. <clears throat> Excuse me, in order to do that, let's click on our ring there. And let's click on our particle settings here. Let's scroll down to where that is. Oh, let's actually click on the ring itself, which is this. This is the emitter here. Click on our particle properties. Right now, they're all sharing the same attributes. But we want to make them single users. So let's click on this three beside the word shockwave. Click on that. Let's scroll up to our next one. It's kind of hard to see this, but let's scroll up. And let's click on our next ring. And click on the two to make it make it an independent user, so to speak. And now with our first one selected, we can leave the uh, settings for the time as they are. Because right now, <clears throat> excuse me, it's 2.4 to 5.8. And let's go to our second ring there. Let's, let's click on that. And let's click in our frame start. Let's make this 20. Enter. And make this 40. Enter. And let's move our window to the left again and locate our other sphere. It's kind of hard to see these. Uh, but if you're usually can go into the um, the uh, outliner and find them, but with this add-on you can't really do that. So let's change the viewports to something bright so we can actually see. Okay, there it is. So left click in here, click on our ring. Come on, where are you, buddy? Didn't oh, there it is. And let's change the start for this to back to our particle settings. Let's make this 50, 5, 0, and then make this 80. Enter. And let's make our viewport dark again. I wish the, I don't know why the add-on doesn't showcase where the rings are. Oh, there it is, right or two, okay. So if, you, if you're trying to find the emitter and the user interface, you can't find it, just toggle down to the outliner, go to outliner, and toggle down, you'll see emitter, 1001. And this emitter is also here. That's the second emitter. And the first emitter is also in the stack there. But yes, uh, a lot to do just to find the emitters. But once we've done that, let's go back to our world settings and make this black again. Make it dark. Let's minimize this. Turn this off. Turn that off. And then press play. One, two, three. And yeah, that's how you can make a uh, like a force, like a plasma gun kind of uh, shot coming from a, a plasma gun where we have the staggered sequence of uh, shockwaves coming from a gun. You know, you can simulate that with this. So yeah, that's today's Blender Quick Tip, the shockwave add-on. And you can get kind of creative with it, really creative with it if you really put your mind to it. Make a planet, a glowing planet or a sun. I can show you guys how to do that in another video. But that's today's Blender Quick Tip, the shockwave add-on. And hopefully this tutorial was helpful for those of you who are watching. Once again, I really appreciate you guys who have subscribed in the past. Those of you who are subscribing now, those of you who will subscribe in the future. And I will see you guys on the next one. All right, adios.